Hi guys, I hope you're all well. So yeah, I've finally done something in this video uh, that I don't normally do. But what is it? Well, hang around and you'll find out. So I've got this lovely big box of orcs, uh, the combat patrol box. And you might have seen quite a few of these orcs already used in the chess set I'm currently building. So this big box was sent to me kindly by those lovely people over at Firestorm Games. There's a link in the description guys, go check them out. They are very competitively priced and they do also sometimes give me discount codes. So yeah, check down below guys, because there might be one there now. They also do a huge range of tabletop games, but obviously I'm obviously interested in the old Warhammer stuff. And yeah, the Combat Patrol box is just awesome. So I've got this copter out of it, um, and obviously the tools we need. Good old snips for, well, cutting bits out. Good old blade for cleaning things up. And then some good old glue, well, for gluing things together. So like with all the Warhammer sets, first thing we need to do is cut the parts from the sprue. Uh, there's not many parts in this, so I'm not even going to bother with the instructions. Uh, that's just the kind of guy I am. Although, normally, I'm the kind of guy who likes to read the instructions. Uh, but yeah, there's only a few parts here, so it is pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, this is where we use, obviously, the blade for gently scraping away any of the, uh, the sprue bits that might be remaining on this, as well as any mould lines, uh, which we do sometimes get. But uh, yeah, generally, it's more for the sprues. Obviously, try and cut the sprue nice and close to the, uh, the piece you're cutting out. But sometimes there are obviously still little bits here and there. So yeah, gently scrape them away. And then because this is quite a simple thing to put together, I am actually just cutting out all the bits at once. Whereas normally if I was following the instructions, you'd cut a few bits out that you, you was required, uh, possibly glue them together, and then cut out some more bits. Uh, but I say, I think this bit only had about sort of like a dozen pieces. Um, it was fairly obvious where each piece went. So yeah, I just cut out everything in one go. Apologies if my voice sounds weird, guys. I've come down with another cold. Um, hopefully it won't last as long as that last one, because I think that last one I had for about six, seven weeks. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed this one will go quite quick. So yeah, these pieces, they do seem to sort of obviously just snap together, uh, but I'm still gonna use my, uh, my glue. Um, and I was obviously recently found out that the glue that I've got is obviously great for having a piece together like it is now. And then this glue is so super thin, which is why it's called Tamiya Extra Thin. Uh, yeah, you just put it on the top and it seeps into the gap, even though the gap's only minute. Um, and yeah, helps bond it together. But say these ones do seem to snap together, so you possibly, well, might not need to use glue in the first place. But again, because I wasn't looking at the instructions, um, yeah, that's why I wasn't too sure glued or not. But I always glue bits together, just because, well, I don't want anything falling apart later on. So everything's going together really nicely and it seems like a good time to quickly shout out and thank all my lovely patrons for helping support the channel as well as my sponsors Easy Roller Dice and Any Cubic. So there are links down below guys to, uh, to those lovely people. And yeah, don't forget to go and check out Firestorm Games as they've sent me quite a few sort of uh, miniatures over the last few months which is pretty awesome. As well, as you guys know, I love painting miniatures now. So yeah, more miniatures the better. Okay, so for the thing that I never normally do, and that is, well, put miniatures on the bases they came with. Uh, this is generally because obviously I like to have my clear bases, but as this model, well, I'm not actually going to use this model, because I don't play Warhammer 40k, sort of the normal big game, um, I only play the kill team. So yeah, so this one is going to be on its normal base, which I say is, well, it's not rare, it's just, well, never happens. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm putting them on his normal base, but obviously it looks a little bit naff because you can see, well, a lot of the black base there. So if I'm going to do a base, then let's do a proper base uh, and make it look, well, a lot nicer. So here's my little paint and handle. Obviously it's going to go on top of that. Uh, but as it's a bit wibbly wobbly, I'm going to stick this metal plate on top of my handle first. Uh, there's a magnet in there. And then there's a much bigger area to glue my what's it down on. So as I was saying, yeah, the base, um, there's a lot of black showing here, and that's a bit naff looking. So I've got this lovely little tub of small, fine, sort of stones, sand kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to kind of blend this whole top in, just to make it look, uh, well, a bit nicer really. I say, if you are going to do bases, it's worth, to, well, doing a nice base. Um, I don't know, people might think that's a bit strange coming from me. But say, yeah, I always use a clear bases, because I love to be able to see what terrain is underneath that figure. So it doesn't matter whether they're in a spaceship or out in a muddy field. Uh, yeah, you can still see the base underneath. But say so this chap is purely going to be more sort of decorative and just kind of like sit on my desk. So yeah, we'll do a proper base. 
It's nice. It's going to be nice and simple though. As you see, it's pretty the um, stones, and they sort of try to blend in the plastic blade base that was at the bottom of this thing with, um, well, with a black base that I stuck it on. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, this is where my cold, I mean, having a blocked nose really does make me feel a bit, uh, well, a bit weird sometimes. So, yeah, no surprise in how I'm painting this chap. Yeah, good old slap chop. So I've already uh, primed it in black. It's already had a dry um, grey brush doing all over it. And as you can see now, I'm now going over with white and doing a good old dry brush. Um, yes, yeah, so I do rub in quite hard just because I want there to be quite a lot of obviously white areas just because then the speed paints go on nice and easy but uh, obviously the recesses and areas that I can't quite reach will stay nice and dark as there is a lot of metal in this uh, this figure uh, obviously mainly because it's the, the helicopter I'm also going to go over and do some dry brushing with some silver um, just so then when I do the sort of contrast paints over the top it will give them a slight sort of metallic look uh, which will obviously fit in really well as obviously this is well meant to be made of metal So yeah similar thing to the grey and the white I've just done uh, Loaded my brush up rubbed most of it off on a uh, sort of, sort of paper towel thingy um, And then yeah good old dry brushing everywhere obviously try not to get it so much or not at all on the orc um, We don't really want him to be shiny, but uh, yeah certainly on all the metallic bits I definitely give it a good old covering uh, I've done, yeah, you can kind of just about see it in the video that it has got a bit of a, a shine to it. Um, and then, yeah, painting-wise, I'd normally go on Google and have a good old look at what other people have done. Um, but in this case, I didn't. I thought, no, nah, I'm just going to paint it whatever colours I want. And I think generally, anything I've ever, ever painted for Orcs, I've always done as red. Just because, obviously, well, red's faster. Uh, and if you're going to be flying around in a vehicle, yeah, let's go fast. So, yeah, using the red. Um, and the good thing here is, say, doing the old uh, the metallic dry brushing or silver dry brushing underneath, it does sort of come through quite well. So it does turn this contrast paint into a metallic looking contrast paint, um, which, yeah, which really worked rather well. So I might be doing this in future on guns and things. I've always had issues with how to do guns. So what I might do is do the dry brushing, dry brush grey, uh, and then I've got a nice, obviously, black uh, speed paint. And I might do that over the top, because then that will certainly show the, uh, the metallic shine underneath. So I went over all the areas on the copter that I thought would look good in the, uh, the red. I didn't want to do too much red, because I want a few other sort of colours in it. Um, yeah, please about that's looking. And now I'm going to do the little orc fellow in the usual colour I'd use, which is the Contrast Plague Bearer's Flesh, um, just because it seems to come out really well. And yeah, using my good old uh, little bottle holder, that I made, well, a good couple of years ago. Um, yeah, this thing's lasted really well. There was a video somewhere on my channel showing how I made it. Um, but as you can see, it is pretty simple, pretty basic. But it does the job. I've never spilt a, uh, a bottle of contrast paint. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with that fact. So, yeah, good old green on the Yorks. Uh, this is definitely my go-to green. And this is the green I've been using, well, the whole of the chest set. Um, I've got a few more figures to paint in the chest set. Uh, and then I'll be showing, obviously, how I've made the board uh, and everything else. Um, yes, yeah, so keep an eye out for that one, guys, because I'm really pleased with how that's come along. And, yeah, there's literally, I think, three pieces to paint, which is, uh, which is really cool. So the slap chop painting technique really is my go-to for, for painting. Uh, but, guys, keep an eye out for my next video, as I am currently trying out something completely different. Um, yeah, well, I can't say any more than that, really. It's, it's something I've not done before. It's a different style of painting, uh, but it is taking me a whole lot longer to paint one miniature. Uh, but yeah, so fingers crossed that'll come out well. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, this thing's coming along really well. Um, trying to make the exhaust look like they're a bit hot. So this is where I think the speed paints, contrast paints, really do work rather well. Because they are so wet, it's nice and easy to, uh, to, well, to blend them into each other. So as you can see, start with orange. Um, I think this is how it's meant to look on the, the heated bits on the uh, exhausts is they go from orange and then they go into uh, like a blue where they are supposedly super hot um, so yes yeah, so that's the sort of effect I'm trying to get here so I've done the orange doing a bit of blue uh, and then I'm going to get some more orange on there and then try and sort of like blend or feather them into each other which I say is really relatively easy to do uh, even for someone like me who's really not really done it before uh, mainly because obviously these speed paints are lovely and wet 
So it is easy to sort of like put them on and then they just sort of blur into each other, uh, which is pretty cool. And then my last step in any of the painting that I do, that's to do a wash. So this goes over any of the uh, the non sort of speed paint kind of uh, kind of paints, uh, just to help blend them in and give them a bit of a uh, bit of shadows um, and highlights and all the rest of it. So yeah, this guy is pretty much done. Um, so we need to get on to do the base, uh, which I haven't really done a whole lot with just yet. And I'm trying something new here, and that's this uh, weathering powder. Because I always find that whenever you paint bases, they look, well, they look painted. So yeah, using this weathering powder, um, never really used this before, seen a few videos, uh, and I think I'm doing it right. But if not, let me go. And let me know in the comments, guys, if there's a better way of doing this. Uh, but what I've, from what I've seen, it is a case of getting a sort of a, a brush that's obviously nice and clean and dry, uh, and then just sort of like dabbing, dabbing the stuff on. Um, again, let me know if I'm doing this wrong. It seems to come out well. Uh, but then again, you never know, there might be an easy or better way of doing this. But the one thing I do love about doing this, um, and that is obviously when you do it on the, uh, the lower parts of the metal, it just sort of helps sort of blend them in a little bit uh, with the ground. Makes it look like it's more sort of dust that's sort of blown up. Um, and yeah, really pleased with how, how it came out. I say, there might be a better way of doing it. I've only watched a couple of videos on it. Um, it seemed pretty, well, easy, self-explanatory. So what I have done as well, just to make sure it obviously stays in place, is give it a, uh, a spray of the, uh, the clear varnish, just because otherwise, well, because it is dust, it might just, um, well, blow away or come off in your hands, which you can kind of see there's a lot of it in my hands already. So yeah, had a little bit of bother getting this sucker off the, um, the base that I put it on. Um, yeah, took a bit of force, and unfortunately a few little bits did, uh, well, did come off. Uh, but hey ho, it shows that I don't really do much with bases, as the one time I do do something with a base, I kind of break it a little bit. Uh, but hey ho, once it's all painted, you won't really be able to see it unless you pick it up and then you go, oh yeah, there's a couple of little cracks in it. Um, and yeah, finishing off, just going around the bottom of the base, tidying it up, uh, and obviously painting it nice and black. Okay, let's see it in all its glory. There you go, I finally do a base for a Warhammer 40k miniature. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay guys, well let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. Uh, what you thought of my basing, what I need to do better. Um, yeah, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Go out and eat cookies and be merry. Okay guys, take care. Bye for now.